The Royal Commission's Toby Driver is flying into the past on a mission to photograph strange shapes in the Pembrokeshire landscape. What look from the air like random patterns are key elements in a military operation. Nearly a hundred years ago, young British soldiers trained here before leaving for the Western Front. What do the trenches tell us about that period? There's been an army training camp at Penali in Pembrokeshire since 1873. The Royal Commission's military expert, Medwin Parry, wants to find out more about the training that took place here during the First World War. Major Barry Inglis is writing a history of the camp and is hoping that Medwin can shed light on gaps in his knowledge. What you can see on here is the old First World War trenches, which we believe was practice trenches for the prelude to the First World War, and they're still here today, and people come to see them from all over the country. It's one of our tourist attractions. Of course, it sits on the Pembrokeshire Coastal Path, which means people walking the path can have a look at that as well. You can't see the detail on the ground as much as you can from the air. It's a very good trench system, but it's a little overgrown now. What's interesting about what I've discovered here is that shortly after the first trench raiding party in January 1915, a small school was set up here to teach you trench raiding parties right. to come in. At night, silent attack on enemy using absolutely barbaric weapons, things like knuckle dusters and cut down bayonets. Well, there was one Scottish chap who was a carpenter whose favourite weapon was a two-pound hammer. He said it would serve him well because he knew it was his good friend and they were trained here in that form of warfare. The trenches at Penali are among the best preserved in the country. A survey was carried out here in 2001, but it missed an important section. So the redoubt here is a localised strong point. It's oval shape. It's set back from the trenches and it's almost on the cliff edge. Um, mm. Unfortunately, when the original survey was carried out, for some reason they, they failed to put this in and it is actually a key element of the whole d defensive mechanism. It looks almost looks like it was connected in some way. But there would have been a communication trench going from the reserve line to this redoubt. If the front line is over there, are we at the back of the front line We're or at the back behind of the everything? Front line. Right. These, these trenches are in three distinct rows, yeah. but this is to support those three. Overlooking them, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, would it have been almost like a, a final stronghold as well? If That's if exactly the, the, what it is. It's it, a final stronghold. Come back into it. Provide covering fire if you have to retreat from the front line. And if troops retreated, would they have come back to here? Or? This, this is a mustering point, but it, it would have been garrisoned by, by a good few troops hmm. here anyway. Despite their random appearance, the trenches used in the First World War had a clearly defined structure. In this image taken by Toby, the front line is nearest no man's land. The centre line would have held support troops ready to take the place of fallen comrades. And the straight line at the back would have been the command line. Now this is the front line trench. This is it? the actual front line. To our left now is no man's land. Oh, right, I see. Yeah, so this is the very front of the whole complex. Yeah. Now you can see on the air photograph, it's quite a confusing array of lines. From the air, at least, uh, it's very clear, the whole plan. But we have several different types of trenches. We've got these very clear sawtooth crenellated trenches here and in the middle. And then these uh, embanked zigzag trenches as well. And then a very simple one here at the back. So why so many different shapes and types of trenches? Well, it'd be very confusing at ground level to try and work yeah. all this out. You, yeah. you have to use an aerial photograph to try and make sense of it all. But we are here. Right, at, I see. At the actual front line. Hmm. We've got those crenellations because each one of those had a little unit in it. I see. Self-contained unit hmm. of fighting men. Now, behind that, you have a similar line of trenches. Yeah, right in the middle support here. Support troops to come in if there was going to be an offensive manoeuvre. So this is your backup troops here, really, in case yeah. there's any issues at the front line. Exactly. And behind yeah. that, you have troops again, but that's the command line. OK. Now, running between them 
you have the, what are called communication trenches. So these these are uh, zigzag yeah. ones here. Yeah, and there would be strict instructions of how to move troops back and forth oh, through see. those. Yeah. There are other good examples of practice trenches in Wales, notably a substantial complex near Bodil Withan Castle in North Wales. And if you're playing golf at Deganoy, also in the north, you're walking across what used to be a World War I training camp. But none of them is carved into rock, as in Penali, which accounts for why they're so well preserved. Many battalions would have passed through Penali, and Pal's regiments had a knack of making the place seem like home. You had a lot of regiments that were pals. Certain professions, people from a certain area, would have raised a small army to fight, so you knew the guys that were with you. You had periods of long boredom, yes. and you might be socialising with each other. And one of the things that they tended to do was um, chat. Now, mm. a chat is a lice, mm. so you'd be de-licing your mates, and you'd be sitting around talking. Well, they're actually de-licing, even in the <laughs> early yeah, 20th yeah. century. Yeah. He's Along with yeah. trench no, And no this. matter what you did, the lice would still survive oh. in the seams of your clothing. Oh, really? Awful conditions. Okay. Yeah. Now, walking around, it's quite disorientating on the ground here. In the heat of battle, or even the heat of training, how on earth do they keep an idea of where they were? Well, one of the things that they had was to remind them of what little comforts they had, mm. or the comforts of home, was to actually name some of these trenches after the streets of where they were from. Oh, see, For example, yeah. if you were part of the Liverpool Pals, you would have the names of Liverpool streets. During his research, Medwin came across this remarkable photograph of the trenches being built. What a photograph. I mean, this is taken at the time these trenches were being excavated. Yeah, fantastic quality. And we're standing pretty much at the angle where these guys were digging the trenches. You can see uh, the church in Tembe at the background, the yeah. Georgian terraces. Yeah. Which archive is this from then? It was actually found in a junk shop, would you believe? Oh, you're joking. Fantastic you? quality photograph. My word. I mean, yeah. it's uh, such a piece of history. Yeah. All the soldiers in it are so well dressed. I mean, look at it. You know, what an image. It just takes you right back uh, nearly 100 years. Caps, braces, shirts, the lot, you know. Yeah. And the regimental sergeant major. Yeah. About keeping a, a watchful eye on it all. Well, I wonder how many of these lads uh, made it back to Britain after their campaigns. Difficult to say. All too few, I would think. Yeah. The Pembrokeshire coastal path passes near the trenches at Penali, but many walkers are unaware of the history at their feet. The commission survey work shows that the past is all around us and that history is often circular or cyclical. Medwin has a salutary story about World War One. So it's quite a sombre monument to walk around, really, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. uh, interesting archaeologically, but at the same time, I mean, these were people here training. Uh, they may never have come back from here. The cost of human life was quite something. Mm. And it, it's worth mentioning that in Mons, there is a monument on the side of the road that commemorates the first shot fired in the First World War. Directly opposite it, there's a plaque on a building mm. that marks the last shot fired on the end of the First World War. So after all that angst, all that waste of human life, so little had been achieved. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> 